All right, now that we've seen in our previous video how to access R within Spotfire, we're going to step things up quite a bit. We're going to use an example where we use tear to access R on our platform, on our laptop, using a built-in tear library called R and R. With R, we're going to access data via the Census API using a RESTful URL. Use that data to create a data frame and place that into a data table parameter within Spotfire, which will allow us to, from an online data source, create a data table within Spotfire which we can then display on a map, as you see in front of you. And with R, we'll only do it in about five lines of code. Let's get started. First, go to Tools, Register Data Functions, and we're going to just open a function that I've already created. Census, API, JSON, whatever you can call it, however you want. This is the data function that I created. Now the first thing that you notice, in this case, we're using a tear specific package that comes with tear, you don't need to add it, it's already in there, called RNR. RNR allows me to access and use an R engine, a regular R engine that's on my laptop or whatever computer I happen to be using Spotfire in. The R and R library gives me this function, R evaluate. R evaluate lets me run native JSON script within a function and pass that function into a parameter. In this case, I'm using library JSON Lite, which is an incredibly powerful library if you haven't used it before. That library gives me access to a function from JSON. With that, I'm able to access the Census API. And using that Census API that returns a bunch of JSON data from JSON will give me a data frame or a data table, just a CSV, however you want to look at it but it's a comma separated list of values that I can read just like any other data table that you would access. Because of this, I'm reading directly from this data source. I do not even have an input parameter. There is no data going into R from Spotfire other than me calling this script. I'm not passing a data table into it. I'm not indicating what values are going into this, what values are going into this data. It's being purely read by, it's all the data is being generated purely by this URL. Output parameters. The name of this output is data. This is the output where all of the R evaluate data is getting assigned to. In this case, my data type is a table, you know, single value, row of values, table of values. And that's it. That's all that I need to do because the R script, R code is so simple in this case. It's a very cleanly put together package. I say run. Again, nothing that I need to handle here on the input. On the output, I just say that it's a data table. I am going to go ahead and create a new data table here as census data. Actually, I'm just going to say census2 because I've already created it once. And I hit OK. OK, so now that we've run our function, it's time for us to check out the data that we pulled in. I'm going to create a new page and pull up a new table just so we can get an idea of what we're looking at. 
Let's see that raw data since it's two. This is the data table we just created, and we can see our population data, our state data, and a row ID. You can also see that it, it pulled in the data a little strange. It named it data one, data two, data three, and had the first row actually be the name row. That's okay. You can clean that up in R as you pull it in, but for simplicity's sake, we didn't want to mess around with any of that stuff and get everybody confused. So we're just going to go ahead. We know what these data mean. We're okay. What do we want to do next? Well, we want to look at this data in a map. So you, building off of some of the other things that we've learned, we're going to create a feature layer colored by these population numbers. We have to go into map properties. We've got to go into our layers. Let's go ahead and add a feature layer. And we're going to use a built-in layer again. US states, because we're going to use the map layer just to make it look pretty. That way, everything's going to jive right out of the box. Move these over to the side so you can see what I'm doing. And we want to color this by our new data census 2, data 1. And as you can see, everything's broken. Why is that? Well, because it defaulted for some reason to geocoding by row number. Let's tell it to geocode by state. And there we go. We have a data connection already. Once again, we had to just create our column match. If it didn't create automatically, since it's two to state. All right, back to colors. What's going on? Why is everything one single color? Well. It looks like we're taking count of data as opposed to sum. So everything is one at this point. If we look, only seeing these values, that tells us that when this data was pulled in, it was pulling in as a string. So extra super secret pro tip here, we can use a custom expression to tell this to give us the sum of an integer. Oops. As opposed to the sum of a string, which would never work. We're forcing Spotfire to read this as an integer and take the sum of it. And we hit OK. There you have it. Sum of population by state on a feature layer that was a feature layer that was contained already in Spotfire through data that we pulled in via R and represented on a map. Now for a quick review of what we learned today. First, using R and R, the tear function that's built into tear that every analyst has on their laptop, allows the use of native R and tear. This is great for people like me that have been coding in R for years and don't want to try to work around the limitations of tear as they're building out the packages. Yes, there are some limitations, but the reason why R and R exist is so that you can use R at any time. The R and R function R evaluate allows you to script in R. This is how it works. You call the package R and R, and then you use the function R evaluate that's contained in that package. The JSON light package allows simple conversion of online J JSON data into Spotfire ready CSVs. Now, as you saw, there was a little bit of noise in that data. We cleaned it up fairly quickly. Typically in production, you're gonna want to include that in your function itself so that the end user, as they refresh the data source, they don't continue to experience those problems. That can easily be done in R as well as tear. The whole process is called data cleaning, data hygiene, or data shaping, or data munging. There's a whole bunch of different terms for it. There's plenty of resources online for how to do that. Uh, please feel free to comment if you'd like some more information. Finally, as you saw right at the end, if you do have some issues with that data and you want a quick fix, you can use custom expressions within Spotfire. That's a fairly simple solution in a pretty complex 
demonstration, but I found that a lot of people tend to get a little confused there. They always want to do a calculated column, but yes, you can use your custom expressions to fix that data. If you have any more questions about this topic or you want to talk about Spotfire in general, feel free to contact our organization at rapid at Thank you very much for your time.